All right, I'm gonna go ahead and call to order the Capital Planning Committee meeting for Monday, October 24th, it's 7.30 p.m. First item on the agenda is approval of meeting minutes from October 12th. Um, I didn't see them come across, so we're gonna pass over that. All right, we'll put on the next agenda. Next is um, chairs and members report on Neary Building Committee. Um, I'm just gonna say on track, no meeting since our last meeting. Uh, Joe Shopsy South Union Subcommittee. Um, we have a meeting on Thursday morning, so I'll, I will know more after that. Okay. Um, just looking to see if there's any. Um, next is athletic complex and school capital submission progress update. Um, so as everyone's aware, I think it was previewed in the last meeting, the athletic complex for Algonquin is gonna be one of the larger capital items this year. Um, they went before CPC um, formally last week. I will share the link. Um, I think it's an important um, conversation to listen to. I think it was about a half an hour. Um, I am working um, with them as well as our Northboro counterparts, given the um, cross section of how this is gonna have to be funded. Um, if it is approved by town meeting to kind of bring forward some numbers. So you'll see that um, shortly. I'm hoping either the next meeting or the meeting after, which is really going to start to drive some of our uh, decision making process as we go um, here the rest of the year. There's, I've also asked the schools, given that they had a bunch of items in particular for Neary this year on the capital plan, to um, do a full refresh. And I believe the school committee's version of the capital planning committee, they have a subcommittee for that is meeting tomorrow to refresh that. So once we have that, we'll actually have a much more complete picture of um, where we're at um, for the year um, to start um, making some decisions. Any questions on that? Um, next steps in status update on Hopkinton Water and Quarterville Road. I don't see Mark yet. Um, so I am going to punt that one towards um, the end of the meeting because I would like his input on some of that and he is a member. So um, I'm gonna come back to that. Um, so with that, I am going to go to the facilities department discussion um, and bring over uh, Mr. Parent. Good evening, John. Hey, everyone. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Um, so, John, we have you on the agenda for three for three items tonight. Um, the first is um, your um, email that you had sent to me related to Quarterville Hall. Um, as a reminder for members of capital planning, we do have a placeholder on the capital plan, as everyone's aware, has been on there for quite a while for the senior center. Uh, renovation um, that's been much discussed. Um, that is for 325,000. Um, as everyone also is aware, the ARPA committee did make a recommendation around that project and the select board agreed with the recommendation. Um, and now John has gone out to bid. Um, and I think the summary email was in the file of, of where those bid results landed. So um, John, I think your request of us is to increase the amount from 325 to 400. Um, to carry on the capital plan with the intent to still use ARPA funds for that. Is that correct? That is correct. Is there anything you wanted to expand upon that wasn't in that initial email related to uh, that? The reason to it basically for the um, expansion of the money from 325 to 400, uh, as everyone knows right now, the economy is horrible when we're doing anything out. Um, and we have some money already set aside for some siding and such on the building next year. So by having this money up to 400, we can have Asabet come in, it looks like, if we do not have any luck going back out to bid. Uh, basically, they can build the room, and while they're there, they've already offered. Do you need any more work done, like electrical upgrades, which we do. As you'll notice on the capital plan, there's some electrical upgrades out in the future. We'd like to roll that in at the same time. And if we do run short on our siding repairs of the exterior as well, that money's also there as well. Um, this has been a horrific year for anything going out to bid. It, it's an absolute nightmare and I don't see this clearing up anytime soon. And is it safe to say your bid results were greater than 400? Uh, yeah, actually almost 500 one of them. 
So it, it was not good. So does everyone understand the request? Does anyone have any questions on the request? Yeah, in terms of the allocation though, is that in our purview to decide how much 325 versus 400? Or is it just the, is he asking for just the, should I ask for the approval or the? No, it's the, it's the amount. We need to have, we need to carry the amount on the capital plan that's going to be seek, sought for some sort of funding. So it's the 75 that's going on there theoretically. Right. Well, we would amend the, the line that says 325 to be 400 if we approved it. And the funding source will be ARPA. separately. Uh, well, that, the, the intent is ARPA because the select board has already approved it. So there's no need to kind of rehash that discussion. Okay. Go ahead, Karen. Um, so John, just quickly, the so the 75,000 increase, that's primarily attributable to um, effects of supply chain and inflation? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Unfortunately, we, I'm hoping we won't need the full 400, but I need it set aside just in case. Yeah. Um, Anyone who's worked with me knows I try to bring in everything under budget if I can. It's getting harder and harder to do that. Yeah. I'll bet. And the unpredictability of it. Um, it's thank scary. you. So any other questions on this specific item? All right. Then I'm going to move that we amend the capital plan for the Senior Center Renovation Quarterville Hall from 325 to 400K per Mr. Karen's request with an intended funding source of ARPA. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Hark? Aye. Palmer? Since I voted on, on this at, at ARPA, I think I'm gonna abstain in this vote. Okay. Shona? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. In Malinos design. So that passes, John. Um, next item is your 10 year capital plan. So, um, on behalf of the committee, thank you for the diligence that you went through to um, pull that all together and, and submit it. Um, <clears throat> I guess, um, unless you have anything you want to walk through in great detail, I'm just planning to see if the committee has um, any questions on any of your submissions or any. Um, thoughts, particularly thoughts of non-support around any of the items you have over the next um, year. Um, I don't think we need to talk about self-union yet, um, but I think we need to at least acknowledge that there's a ton of capital for that next year. So um, something to certainly watch for as um, Joe, your committee wraps up its work and obviously the select board decides where it wants to go next. So I guess, John, is there anything you wanna do before I go around the horn to see if any members- Actually, the only thing I was gonna bring up was self-union. I'm uh, just going to say there are a few things there we can move out should we decide to keep the building anyways. I know it's very heavy for next year on that. That's because we've been pushing out. Um, but roof and boiler, I'm sure I can get a few more years out. Um, the only thing I think really needs to be done next year is we really should address the painting issue on the exterior of the building. That's the major one. Um, outside of that, everything else pretty standard. But again, where, where paint's coming off, we should look at that in next year's budget, but everything else is flexible with that building. And, and, and to be clear, next year, you mean FY25, which would be the 2024 yes. town meeting. Exactly, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other questions on any of John's more immediate items? You, you did, you did, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. No, it's okay, go for it. Um, uh, you did switch over, it was a, what, a boiler from one place to the DPW, is that correct? Yes, um, last year we actually had a boiler um, furnace at the cemetery, um, it failed. Uh, so we were able to do that through capital maintenance. Right. Um, we had no choice at that point, needed to be done. And while we were having some work done on the one at Self Union last year, I was informed by the boiler company, really, you need to do this. It wasn't much of a suggestion anymore. They're like, you can get another year or so, but that's really it on this thing. Okay. Um, so again, and um, did I say Self Union? I'm sorry, Station 2. Uh, just caught myself. Um, yep. Station 2, it's actually a very well-built building. So we are going to have to put a little bit of money over the years, but 
it's it's something we really need to do that that boiler down there. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, go, go ahead, Jeff. Just two questions or three questions, actually. And I'll be quick. The security cameras, the library. Yep. Is that a security system as well, or could no? Is there... This is strictly um, Jeff. What we're looking at is both at the library and Ryan Donovan. Uh, we're going to focus on basically the entrances is all they're really looking for. Um, so even this number here, I think this is a little bit strong. This number, but I'd rather come in a little strong right now. I'm hoping we can shave quite a bit off that. I'm going to check with these uh, the company again that we would be using. Um, I'd rather hold this number where it is right now, but I would not expect it to be this high. Because I was thinking, maybe this is a dumb question, but a ring camera, are those even allowed to be used? Something, something like a, a ring camera, which is significantly cheaper, That is that do the same job that something like uh, this? Not with the same quality, unfortunately. What they're going to get here, I, I believe it's 4K, and it does back up, and they can pull it up through, like a ring. You can pull it up through their phones and stuff to check it. I would recommend what we're going to do over that. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Second question is on the overhead doors. I know we had talked about that previously. Yep. I don't remember what the cost was for doing one of the doors um, versus doing them all. Is that is that represent a discount at this point? Uh, yes and no. If you look at it this way, with this has inflationary numbers in it. So okay. it's, it's more than we originally thought, but this is all at once. Uh, which I believe it was a little bit of savings overall. And again, I'm hoping we may be able to adjust this number down next year. But if there's anything I've learned in construction, once numbers are up for a while, they rarely come back down. And that's what's making me really nervous here. Understood. The longer this drags out, the worse it is for us as we get on the road. Understood. Great. And the last question, John, is just on the maintenance fund. How is that? held up over the past couple of years, 100,000. Is that a good number or is that? Unfortunately, no, it's not anymore. Um, I've already mentioned to, a, um, I think I mentioned to Jason, I've mentioned to a couple of selectmen that I was going to increase it by 25,000. But I think what we would be better to do at this point, increase my budget, the operating budget by that, because I now find that I'm putting recurring expenses on occasion into the capital maintenance fund. And that is a very bad thing to do. So I really don't want to go down that road. So I would feel a lot safer increasing the operating budget rather than the capital maintenance budget. Let's make sure we're accounting for things where they should be accounted out of. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Go ahead, Joe. John, how many of the how many of the other buildings um, in town have cameras, security cameras? Security, um, blah, 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 basically, um, public safety complex. Okay. Would this would this um, would this system just be local to the library building or would the, the, it also be patched into public safety? We could set it up to be patched in. It's not really a necessity where it records and they could pull it up. through. It's, it's mobile through phones, basically. So you can sign in anywhere to get it, uh, but it wouldn't be like up on their, their main monitor. And um, dispatch, they have, I think it's probably 12 to 16 camera shots going simultaneously mm -hmm. of the public safety complex. I can't see where they'd want to put the library up on that screen rather than the public safety complex. This yeah, no. If something happens inside, they want to know who came in and out. Yeah, I'm just wondering if this is if if this is really a trend that we're looking at long term, where we're looking at doing more of the other town buildings as well, and and making it more of a staple so that they can keep tabs on all the buildings in town from public safety. Um, it's not necessarily. I think that it's necessary, but I think that long-term that may help um, to keep man hours under control and not need a few extras to monitor certain situations. Well, what I can do then, Joe, is I can, again, when I reach out to the um, company that will be doing the installation, I can ask them what it would take just to tweak it so down the road it could be brought in. It's probably going to be as simple as they're going to add a web address. Good, Tony. Yeah, I think Joe raises the beginning of a whole set of interesting questions around um, video monitoring entrances, you know, entrances to town buildings throughout the town. Um, and I think there are privacy questions here. I mean, I wonder if there's like a policy 
that needs to be set by whoever sets the policy in, in town about security monitoring like this. This 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 can be pretty complicated, actually. You know, how long do you keep the recordings? Who has access to them? I mean, there are all sorts of questions here. Um, yeah, there are just all sorts of questions here. So not to drag this discussion out too much tonight, but I think this is actually kind of a complicated topic. Uh, honestly, Tony, that's one of the issues that Ryan and I had discussed. At first, they were looking at cameras throughout the building. That makes people very uncomfortable. And, and I, I get it. It's like, I understand, want to see who's coming in and out, but to yeah, have cameras so, everywhere you go in life, it, it, it's a little uncomfortable for a lot of people. Yeah, I, I think, and I'm sorry to interrupt, um, but and I, don't, I don't think this group is going to set the policy, but I, I wonder if there's a policy that the town has to set about how to, what kind of security monitoring do they want to do? Um, I think there are a lot of complicated issues here. I, I think that's certainly something we can task Mark with to talk to town council about. Um, I'm sure they've dealt with this quite a bit in other municipalities. Um, and I can speak to some of the discussions we had when public safety um, was built. Obviously, that's a very different sort of building than a library. Um, so um, there were actually requirements um, based on police, in particular, the police accreditation of certain areas that had to be monitored. And obviously there are certain areas that are not monitored um, you know, for, for other reasons. So I think there was some good policy and direction there based on how you build those sort of buildings, but obviously we're retrofitting a building in this example. So um, Mark, I think you have some homework on, on that particular piece to be able to address before it obviously gets to advisory and select board um, for decisions from a capital perspective. Go ahead, Joe. I just want to, I just want to add to people. Um, most all of us have kids in in the school systems, and they almost all the buildings have those. Um, and they're like a ring style um, video camera right at the door, and I don't know what those are patched in, but so I think that those should be added to that discussion that they're going to have. I think school committee probably governs that with the school administration, but Mark can correct me if I'm wrong. Um. Oh no! I just meant I just meant in terms of patching that into a unified system, if that's you know because moving forward that could be part of the policy and police could monitor who's going in and out of those buildings which have lots of children. And it's a hot topic. Got it. Um, were there any other questions on anything John had in the short term capital plan? Um, Okay, John, obviously we're not making any decisions tonight. We're still hearing from department heads and still waiting for some submissions. But um, while we have you, if you just give a brief update on the townhouse project before you um, sign off for the evening in terms of where that's at um, and just when it's going out to bid, et cetera. And I'll, I'll also send the committee the link to, to the more formal presentation that they made to CPC last week because that includes a lot of um, details that uh, I don't think we need to go through tonight. Uh, basically, we're getting real close to going out to bid. We expect to do so in the next couple of weeks. Um, with, with the bid process, um, again, I'm not overly optimistic. I'm hoping I'm wrong. Uh, we did add um, some alternates to the actual bid packet, just in case the bids come in exceptionally high. Uh, basically, historic chimney restoration in the um, EPDM roof membrane on the top of the roof. So we may need to come to capital for some help if this comes in higher than we have been anticipated. Uh, other than that, it's going to be a beautiful project. That's all I can tell you. The townhouse is going to look fantastic when it's done. Unfortunately, this is the year where we're going out to bid. As I did state to CPC last week, if these come in devastatingly high, we may have to pull back for a while and rebid this thing because we don't want to pay more than we really should. Um, so I'm very hopeful, but I'm also being cautiously optimistic. I, I've seen what happens when things get like this. Um, it would be nice if we could get the windows going over the winter as we planned. They'd start construction, but a lot of it is strictly going to come down to what these bids come in at, unfortunately. Okay, any questions for John on that piece? All right, John. Oh, go ahead, Joe. I don't have a question on that, actually. Um, I did have one other question, and these are so far out that it, I was just wondering what they were, but there are three 
in your in the plan there was three different items listed for like um 30 31 and 32 for for public safety complex floor coverings and i didn't know if that meant it was meant to cover three different buildings or if there was some place um, we would John, do it in segments bonding, right but it, okay, so the plan is to do one segment at a time and it's yeah. all three different years because it was, you know, it was like a hundred thousand plus dollars on each one. So it just seemed right. Again, I trying to way... anticipate for inflation and they may last longer, Joe, too. I'll say the hallway material that was put down is fantastic. Okay. It's really, it's wearing great uh, carpeting areas. That's what I'd really expect. You're going to need to do at that point. You're getting to the, the point of life expectancy there and then. But yeah, I know it's really far out. I, was, I just didn't know if it was an error or, or if that was just the plan. Okay, I got it. All right, John, I'm going to have you hold on for um, two minutes, if you don't mind. Let me bring okay. recreation over. Um, let's talk through the van on that and okay. we'll let you go. Um, they're going to have to call a meeting and stuff. So give us a couple of minutes, if you don't mind, while I pull um, everyone else over here. All right, cool. Hello. All right. I think I got everyone, Jen. Um, it looks like you have a quorum, so I'll turn it to you first. All right. So then we will bring the Recreation Commission meeting to, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, we'll start it at 7.52 p.m. All Great. right. And yeah. welcome. Um, thank you um, for joining us. Um, I thought what we would do while we had John here is I know the Recreation Commission didn't join us last time, but I know Tim has likely briefed you on the questions that came up from some of our members related to um, the van purchase out of the revolving fund. So maybe turn it to Tim and John for a quick update on your follow up actions and, and what your recommended path or requests are tonight to try to move that forward. Sure. Um, so the, the task was to look into an electric option uh, when it comes to the van. Um, on my end, I know John did some work on his end as well. Uh, we got in touch with our contact for the municipal as the vehicle purchasing. And as I suspected, as I stated at the meeting, um, currently he is unaware that passenger vehicles are in production right now. Uh, when it comes to the electric, he is aware of cargo, um, like we did talk about. Um, but at, when it comes to availability of uh, what can be purchased at this moment, um, electrical 15 passenger vans are not on the market currently. Um, beyond that, looking future of what those may look like, even if they were available, you know, there's, there's pros, there's cons, a lot of cons around the range of what we'd be able to get out of those vans being about 100 miles of a full charge. Uh, when we're driving all over the state sometimes. So some pros, some cons, but the, the biggest one being that they don't exist right now. Um, they're not available for purchase. Um, and John, I, I think your contact confirmed such and more. Unfortunately, Tim is correct on this one. I reached out and um, I spoke with Chris Collins at Energy Conservation Inc. He is not familiar yet of any large passenger vans like Tim does need for this. Um, cargo vans, yeah. Passenger, not, not to date yet. Um, I would say, though, as we're moving forward the next four or five years, I think you're going to see just about anything we buy that's not a heavy piece of equipment. You know, there's going to be an option for electric, but it, it's just not right now for this particular item. Um, I'll turn it to the members that had questions on this to see. I guess where you stand and whether you need any more information to take a vote. Yeah, Tim and John, thanks very much for checking up, um, checking into that. That was, you know, my question initially, um, and you know, I thought thought I had seen something online, but I didn't look at it in depth to see, you know, what the availability with availability is. So I really appreciate you checking it out, and um, I don't have. It seems to make sense to buy a gas powered vehicle at this point. Thank you. You're most welcome. 
there any other discussions or questions on that topic? Then um, I guess to crystallize the motion we took last time, I'm going to move that the capital planning committee support. Um, it's still 50,000, right, Tim? Yeah, not to 50,000 yeah. for the um, with a funding source of the recreation revolving fund for the recreation um, department slash commission's uh, purchase of a 15 passenger van. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote. Uh, Hark? Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schoener? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski's aye. So you got that uh, unanimous, Tim and the commission. Um, thank you. Let's um, thank you for, for um, bearing with us. I think it's important to get answers to those questions. And, um, you know, I guess, John, before I go into my next item, thank you for your time tonight. And uh, no we'll be in touch if we have any more questions as we go through the process. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Um, so the next item is the review of the 10 year capital plan submissions. Um, you know, Tim and I um, exchanged some notes in advance, um, and he had uh, kindly shared the latest um, Lumblad in Choate uh, Field um, probable cost estimates and, and some diagrams. And I know, um, in particular, Tim, I asked you a lot of questions about Lumblad, you know, trying to, you know, think through um, timing on that. So um, I think it's probably best if you or, or someone from the commission just give us an update first on that how you're looking to fund it, when you're looking to fund it, and then we'll take questions on the project, et cetera. Then we'll transition to Choate, um, realizing that those are kind of the two big items you're looking at here over the next couple of years. Sure, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get into it. And if I miss anything, I'll, I'll ask that one of my commissioners speak up. Um, so for Lundblad Field, um, the field that's located down at Neary uh, on top of the old landfill, kind of on the upper hill of DePetri, the parking lot, uh, the commission is looking into installing a dog park uh, on half of that field. Um, that's in response to master plan, um, as well as just community feedback that we've been receiving for years now. Um, so we are in the process of looking into that. Uh, we did have preliminary um, study done uh, with a contracted service, Activitas, uh, landscape engineers and design. Um, and we did get prices as well as um, as Jason said, diagrams and kind of layout of what it would look like. Um, so what, where we're at right now is are um, in tune with a grant that is available that we're going to be applying for, uh, for the planning aspect of it. And that would get us documents, construction documents and bid documents to get towards um, further along within the project. Um, the grant that we're looking at is a, a grant that would fully fund it of the planning pr process. And then from there uh, would be the bigger obviously the bigger take of construction uh, within that as well. Um, at our last meeting that we discussed our, our avenue with that is going to be, there's a construction aspect to this grant as well that funds 90% of your hard costs, which is the cap set 225,000. Um, and then the, the hard costs we're looking at is uh, just north of 600,000 to construct the park. Um, so we will most likely be looking at um, CPA funding for the remainder of that project when it, when it comes to construction. So the first piece of it is planning. Um, like I said, we'll, we'll probably be getting that grant in probably hopefully by the end of this week, if not next week. Um, and we will see where that, where that lands. Um, that will take care of it for now. And then so most likely and ask for next fiscal year, next town meeting. So uh, fiscal 25, uh, potentially a CPA article, um, if that's the route that's decided on top of the grant, if we're lucky. Um, to fund the, the rest of the project to get that through to construction. And I think yeah. just for, for, for everyone's benefit on that, we were carrying that for this year's town meeting. So, right, so from a capital perspective, we talked about what the numbers were looking like. That candidly getting pushed a year, regardless of funding source, and obviously, you know, entertaining a funding source outside of the town for whatever you need this year is. Um, obviously a huge delta um, in, in a positive way um, to our plan. Um, so I just wanna make sure everyone's following that because we had been carrying that for a while. And I know the design um, work was funded quite a few years ago at this point as well, Tim, probably. Was that before you even came to yeah. town? 
Yeah, okay. that piece of money was before. Yep. All right. So before we transition to choke, I, I guess. Jen, can I just any... clarify one thing? Just sure. the design work that was done before was not necessarily the design work that we've shared with you tonight. It was work to understand like what is the status of the field? Could we actually put heavy machinery on it? Like stuff like that. So just just for clarification, the money that was spent for that was for a different purpose to like initially, it, can we do anything here? So from that learning, then we were able to move forward with the design work for this, this park now. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else from a commission perspective before I just see if anyone from Capital has questions on uh, Lumblad? All right, anyone from Capital have questions on Lumblad? Go ahead, Jeff. I do. Um... What is on that field now? Is it anything? It's just an open, uh, open space playing field. You play soccer on it. Right. Okay. So my, my other question is, is that technically on school property, that field? No. Okay. So there's no concerns about having it be close to a school and having it accessible during the school hours? No. No? Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Joe. Um, for the rest of Lundblad, is there is there any um, or what is the current plan on renewal for that field? What do you mean by renewal? So, I, I, if I could maybe weigh in on this one, Tim, I think I think what we've determined so far, based on the work that we did, is that if you look at the the size of the field, right, it's, it's a very expansive piece of property. There's a portion of the field right now that's actually in very good shape. Right, and that's where most of the activities happen. The portion of the field that we are targeting for the parks is the portion of the field that would likely need the rehabilitation that you might be thinking of. And so part of what we are kind of coupling here is, is that by seeking an alternate sort of park approach here, we're actually, instead of dropping in the estimated costs it would take to restore that to say level grass, uh, we're going to use this opportunity to repurpose what that field, that portion of the field is used for. And Tim, you can cover if I say anything wrong there, but that's where I think the question was going. And and with the idea of retaining half of that field to still act as a playing field as it is now. So we'd still be getting the same use, but now be a multi-purpose facility. Well, it, seem, it seems like it'd probably be more than half, half the field would still be turned over for, for soccer use. Um, in terms of the rest of the field, is there any plan to level it or to um, amend issues with it? I don't know how difficult that would be. It's, it is an old old landfill space, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, and the issue is that it is settling, as you know. So, yeah. But as Don said, each side, there's a difference each side. Yes, both sides are settling, but the worst side that, from what we are hearing from the engineers that are there, that is in most need of repair is the side that we'd be putting this dog park on. Um, so we wouldn't be touching or trying to level out uh, what, what the, the remainder um, as of now or in yeah. the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking back to, um, I mean, obviously when the field plan got kind of torn apart at a town meeting, it kind of left all, all the maintenance of most of the fields up in the air. And um, so I don't know um, how yeah, so that is, I mean, that is still like in the plan. So right now what we're looking at in that field is that the part where we would put in the dog park addresses the part that is the worst condition yeah. and allows us to like meet some other, um, I guess, requests of the town through master, through the master plan and stuff like that and address um, some accessibility and provide more like flat walking. So we'd have um, more walkways up there. And the rest of the field can still be used. We still have we still have a little bit of time till it becomes un, like unusable. Um, so the the full plan for up there does include options for what we could do to revitalize that part of the field, this playing field as well. So some of them are there. We haven't made any firm decisions around there because we're really just tackling that far side that we want to okay. um, address first. And 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 the future. Um repair and monetary concerns of upkeep where did that come where does that come from you'll see that in the capital that's in the 10-year capital plan okay um what what, what is there a source of those funds that we that has been identified or is that just to be determined i'm not sure uh, uh I, I, it's christian i think um keep in mind we we have gotten a lot of our 
our field plan approved and actually in progress and completed primarily to Petri. Um, <clears throat> so, and um, by my, <laughs> oh my so, so we have done a, we've done a number of projects, but I think Kristen, yeah. we have now one of the findings that we've worked hard on in the last four years has been that you can't not regularly spend on maintenance, resting, upkeep of the fields and not expect to have to drop a whole bunch of money every so many right. years. Right, so, but I think we have that in our capital plan. That's what in I terms said. Of yeah. I, I, actually, I really meant specific to the dog park. Is that, is that going to be in a separate plan bin? The You know, dogs dig under the fence, things get broken, thing, things happen at these parks. Um, is that is that expected to be a town operating budget issue? Or is there a separate fund that this can be drawn out of? Or does recreation pay for it? Who who actually takes care of it? We it haven't say, got if, Yeah, I would think, Tim, would, because of Von Blatt is, uh, is a town field, it would say within the same scope of any of the necessary repairs for any of the fields or parks in the town. Okay. All right. Um, I just had one question. It, it sort of tees off of Jeff's. I'm not sure how the agreements work with, with the schools, but I would think similar to other projects that are even adjacent to school property, even if they're not on it, um, you know, before you go too far, have you had a discussion with the superintendent and, and his team just about, they have any concerns? I'm just thinking about a dog gets loose sort of thing, like it, how the fencing works, like in, in just stuff like that, that naturally may come into play as this gets further vetted. No, nothing formal. But, you know, obviously happy to have that conversation with them as we're in talks all the time. So, Jason, I think just interject beyond dogs, just random people hanging around the school that wouldn't be there otherwise. I think that's my concern. Yeah, and I think you can look at it, too, of what we have at, at the other facilities, too. I mean, the, the Richardson courts down at Neary are not Neary's courts, so those are open to the public. Um, the Finn courts at Mooney, um, the Mooney courts are not school courts and those are open to the public so we have we have public going in and out already and parking using the parking areas um on quote unquote school school grounds um so it's not uncommon because it's already being done um it would just be another layer of it that we just have to have a conversation with uh their their side of the house with it as we do all right are there any other questions on lumblad for tonight all right, Tim, why don't you or someone bring us up to speed on where Chode, at, Chode is and where you, what you're thinking there? So Chote, um, more commonly referred to as Woodward. Um, so we, we've always talked about and we've had this, uh, not an idea, I think it's, a, it's not a, a secret that we're in need of uh, another turf field um, to expand the, the demand, to meet the demand um, of the user groups in town. Um, originally, um, I think Prior to when I was here, um, the original target was Neary uh, to turn Neary into a, a turf complex. Uh, but re, rethinking and retooling and relooking at the site, uh, Woodward has become the, the front runner if we were to move from grass to turf, just because Woodward does have lights already on site. Um, so the plan would be to turn that softball diamond as well as the outfield and the smaller choke one field um, into full turf um, to extend the use of that facility seasonally and via time. Um, just for all user groups in the, in the town to use. Um, so we did do um, a study out there. Uh, we got numbers based on multiple plans of what we could do out there, um, which would really just, again, just turf that entire complex, uh, bringing up the ADA um, and everything that we would need to do that. So uh, we have the plans in place, or we have the plans that we, that we agree on as a, as a commission. We have the, the numbers. Um, timeline wise, we are not completely set. I know we've had some conversations that this may or may not hinge on what happens with Woodward and what's going on with the schools. Um, but where we're at right now is that that number is the number that was uh, brought to us um, to make this a reality. And that's what's plugged in. Any questions on that? Uh, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, Tim, so is that um, that field just used for baseball and softball or is it used for other activities? Other, just about every activity. So there's softball out there, baseball, um, we have soccer in the outfield for most of the time. Uh, lacrosse is on there. Our summer camp program is out there. 
uh -huh. um, private groups, public groups, everything. So it's a, it's a well used facility. Yeah, that's that's great. And so the other, you know, I'm looking at the the picture of it on my screen that you sent out, and that there's like to the left of that, there's kind of a soccer field. Um, is there any reason why that is not included in the plan? That's one just one of the options. Um, and it, it just comes down to what direction we want to go with. Um, that that's a left use. If you're looking at the field in totality. Uh -huh. um, that's a, a less used area. So if we were looking to cut funds or cut costs, um, we could just leave that as natural grass um, and turf the rest. Um, it just comes down to a conversation of what we, we think is best and what direction we want to go. Okay. And this proposal excludes that piece, right? I believe so. Maybe not. Let me look. <laughs> And Jen or Don, if you know off the top of your head, feel free to chime in. I know we had, I know we costed out multiple options. I don't remember which one got loaded. And we'll, we'll come back to you on that one. That's the um, entire, I'm sorry, that's the entire complex, that's including the, that small field. Okay. It's a couple of years out, right? right? So yeah, escalated. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I just like to add, it's it's Kristen. If if you look at this particular season, it's the perfect example of of why we're driving for turf. We've had a lot of rain this season. Um, poor Tim is the uh, bearer of bad news when fields have to be closed, and inevitably on the South Bro Facebook page, people complain. But we made a commitment when we agreed to, you know restore the fields and ask for that funding that we would take care of them, which with grass fields, it means if it's wet, excessively wet, even with fixed drainage, we, we just, you know, no town's going to want players on it. But if you'll notice, you know, people are complaining about that. So just giving you a little background on, on why we feel the need for turf is so important because seasons like this, where we're having excessive rain, unfortunately, really impacts the ability for, for teams to get out there and play. Right, Jeff. So I guess I would preface I'm not against this for, for older kids, but I do know I've seen a bunch of studies that there are higher risks of injuries for younger kids with non-contact type injuries to their knees and other lower leg injuries. And I wasn't sure if that's been considered. That's part one. And then part two, you know, I've read also that this is made out of forever chemicals as well that could be potentially bad for the environment. So I just don't know if we've thought about that and um, oh, what, the, what the push is for, for turf, honestly. Um, so we've done a lot of research and like, I guess I would say for every study out there, it doesn't tell you how bad it is. There's a multiple other studies that'll tell you that it's not. Um, so I think that there's like, this is where kind of like following the guidance from like the parks and recs and like some of the, like the government, um, sites, we've got some studies on that we looked into. Um, I know we dug into them actually quite a bit, probably like three or four years ago, um, to really learn and learned a lot. Also, there's a lot of different materials out there today. Like, yes, there are some that are not as healthy. There are others that are like natural walnut filling and like stuff like that, that, so there's choices. And there's a huge scale of what we could actually buy and install. So like if we were to head down the path of actually getting this turf and getting more serious about it, there's a lot of different choices around the padding and the infill and the types that we'd be selecting to actually put there that would give us a lot of options to be able to meet the needs of the community. Um, but I mean, and then again, like we also, we've got turf on the 9-11 and I think that um, also, I mean, like, our we, kids are going also, to other towns on these same ages and playing on turf as well. So it's not that we are the, we definitely are not the only ones doing this. We're actually the, probably the last ones to the game on turf. Um, and just provides a lot of like, I guess the usability to at all times and more hours and stuff like that. Um, even little things like Woodward's supposed to have a color run. It was canceled, to, it was postponed from yesterday to tomorrow, and now it's been canceled because the fields are too wet, right? So they can't even use, the school can't even use the fields um, 
Whereas if it were turfed, it would be no problem. They could have been out there. Okay. What about in terms of an estimate though, if we were to go more natural type um, supplies, and what would that do to the estimate? I'm, I'm assuming uh, they were cool. actually pretty similar. Kristen, if you recall, I thought we were surprised that like cost really wasn't an issue. It was more about like, you know, sourcing it and what we wanted to use. Durability, yep, you're right. Yep. We, we have done, to Jen's point, we've done significant research on this. We've talked to experts. We've talked to various turf companies. I mean, we we've we have done extensive research on this. Don and I met with a team in Shrewsbury that um, fundraised for their turf field, learned about that. We, we understand the effort involved. We understand all the considerations. Like this is not, this has been several years in the making. Um, and as Jen mentioned, like just today, my daughter plays on the uh, newly formed Trottier team, and they were able to play today, the boys and the girls, because they were going to a town that had turf in place. And unfortunately, 9-11, it's one field. So the demand for it is quite significant. We don't actually technically own that land. It's a lease that, you know, 15 years, well, less than 15 years from now, it, it you know, comes up again. So, it, it, you know, again, a lot of thought gone into why we're making this proposal. I appreciate that. I'm not not down about it at all. I just was expressing some of my my, my thoughts. So I appreciate that. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Um. Sort of back to that last point about the natural the natural substitutes. Um. Was the cost relative just in the purchase, or was it all through the life lifespan of the maintenance of it? Because I know there has to be maintenance every so often on the fields to pull things up. And I would gather the natural substances probably are a little bit more likely to um, corrode or degrade. It, it was less about, I think if I remember correctly, it was less about the uh, cost of maintenance and more about the lifespan. So I think you get a, if, if uh, um, some of the materials are more durable, you might get a 15 year lifespan. If you go with some of the more natural materials, you may end up with more like a 10 or a 12 year lifespan. So you see it more on lifespan than you do on annual maintenance costs. On the lifespan, does that mean the, that you can use a, a feeder to pull the pull the stuff up out of the turf and then re, sort of reseed yeah. it, so to speak, as opposed to redoing the turf itself? Yeah. And I mean, it requires special machinery. So we'd have to like yeah. rent something like that for a special. But yes, you basically could. So if we had a walnut filling that only lasted 10 years, you could you could pull that out and then refill it. So. Yes. OK, yep. and, and I'd like to say that for the record, I still remember from town meeting being told that, you know, rotating the fields and also having being able to extend early and late season. We need the AstroTurf as well. So there are a whole bunch of, of good reasons for having it, yeah. um, which I learned from all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Um, Don, this may be a question for you, mainly because I think I've heard you say it a bunch of times. Um, what are you thinking latest on funding source? I know you were thinking that there may be some potential for private funding here. Is that still in it's, play? That would still be, that, that, to me, that would still be a significant component of it. Um, we've looked, part of our research, part of talking to towns like Shrewsbury and others was, um, for the most part, a lot of these are mixed uh, programs. So you use the CPA funds uh, to help with some of the drainage and infrastructure underneath, sometimes the, the infill. Um, but then you also have an opportunity. These are natural um, projects for um, sponsorship. Uh, so whether it be uh, local banks, investors, communities, uh, organizations, things like that. Uh, I believe in um, the camera for Shrewsbury was in honor of a former um, long serving uh, town official. Uh, the, the widow had donated money. So there's there's all there's many different options. Um, as we progress, that's probably one of the uh, interesting challenges is that how do you navigate the mix between uh, uh, someone going out and soliciting those donations versus uh, versus sort of our uh, organization, which we're not in a position we can, where we can do that. So as this moves forward to fruition, one of the things that we have to figure out is how do you organize yourselves? And thankfully, we do have examples from many other communities to sort of follow. But I, I would foresee it being definitely a um, an opportunity to, to pull in, especially given our community, that there should be plenty of opportunity to solicit um, not only donations, but sponsorship as well. So basically you're saying not 100% funded by the general fund or some other town Absolutely. meeting source. I, I, would, I, wouldn't, I, I would not recommend going for it 100% at all. Like this is an opportunity. There's plenty of folks who would want to be 
a part of a project like this to to sort of have a legacy and, a, and a sort of a uh, an element from a town contribution perspective. Um, and we've seen we are not breaking ground. Uh, no pun intended. No, we're not breaking ground on how this is done. There's plenty of other uh, communities that have uh, been successful at doing this in the past, and it would be a matter of um, uh, five, following the blueprint having the right individuals. And, and thankfully we've talked to one of the things that Kristen and I did is we actually talked to some folks that are, you know, professionals at fundraising and what are the things that take to, to get that to be uh, taken care of. So um, there's, there's a pathway to do it. Uh, and it doesn't, it's certainly a pathway that wouldn't require a um, hundred percent funding. Okay. Joe. It, it didn't occur to me. I, in the in the brochure, it said, I believe it said it was designed to be a softball field. Is there a different specifics for the design of the softball field versus the baseball fields on the other side of town? And is this would this be the first field designed specifically for a softball? In so town? so I'll I'll answer in reverse. So no, um, if you were to go to the NEBC complex in Northborough at uh, the intersections of Route 20 and Route 9, you'd see um, uh, all kinds of manner of field: uh, baseball, softball, soccer. Um, soccer and softball coexist, same uh, structure. We're not putting in a, you know, a FIFA World Cup quality field. Um, we'd be putting in a general use uh, safety sort of priority um, from a padding and, and material perspective. Um, if you wanted to see a comparable field, um, I can look it up. I believe it's um, Medway or Medfield, uh, rather. Medfield um, has a, a field uh, named in the honor of a, uh, a former student. It would look almost exactly as what we're proposing here. In one corner, you get the softball field, um, and then you have the so soccer field overlaid. Softball fields don't require a mound, so you get that nice flat surface. What you tend to do is just color in uh, where the mound is with a different color, uh, and then you get the multi-use. So... But this, but all, for all intents and purposes, this would be the only softball design field in in town. You got Finn too, and you got. Is there a softball two. field at Finn? Yeah, the the lighted field is technically a softball field. Um, you got Finn okay. too, as Jason said. Um, Trotter has a softball field; it's just not active. Neary has a softball field, so they're around. Right. Good, Jeff. Just quickly on the on the cost savings. Think about irrigation and maintenance. How much would we be saving from not having to to irrigate or keep up that grass every year? I, I don't have a number for you now. Uh, with that, we haven't gone that far into it. I'm sure it would be significant given I know the time that they put out there already, especially cutting short one. As if you've been out there, you've noticed in the last year or two. Um, so between those two, like you said, Jeff, I'm sure it'd be significant. Yeah, thanks. Are there any other questions for recreation tonight? All right, um, Tim and the commission will certainly be in touch as we move forward, but obviously you don't have anything major for this year. So um, we'll just let you know if any questions come up and we are obviously starting to look ahead as you can see from some of the questions given um, there's a bunch of big capital items coming forward for the town. So just wanna make sure we're got all our ducks in a row. Very good. Very good. Thanks for your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, do you want to adjourn your meeting? Sure. Yep. We'll make a motion to adjourn at 824. Second. Um, second there. Roll call vote. Hanson, yes. About yes. yes. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. All right. Um, now that um, Mark is back, um, I'm gonna go back to the item I skipped earlier on the agenda, which was um, next steps and status update on Hopkinton Water in Quarterville Road. Um, so I'm gonna split this into two and Mark's gonna interrupt me um, at any point, but just, I thought it was important to give everyone an update of um, where we're at, um, especially in, particular, um, if you haven't heard, the DPW superintendent has um, resigned effective early January um, and obviously was part of both of these projects in terms of, um, you know, the last time we heard about um, the, them in, um, I guess that was July. So when Hopkinton Water, 
Um, as some of you have probably seen, uh, Mr. Butler, who assisted us with the transfer station analysis um, in our first year as a capital planning committee, um, has been tasked um, by the select board um, to do a deeper dive into that. Um, as of now, capital does not have any um, formal role in it. Um, I, Mr. Butler did email me at one point during his process to say he uh, may be reaching out at some point, um, but as of now, um, we are gonna kind of wait and see what the select board asks of us and where, where they decide to go. I know they have a publicly posted meeting um, on Wednesday. Um, I have been in contact with Mr. Boland as well as the chair of the Public Works Planning Board. Um, and um, I think we both agree we will certainly call meetings if we are asked um, to further weigh in on it. Um, but right now the select board um, seems to be dealing with that topic um, directly. I guess, Mark, is there anything you would add on that? No, I think you filled it out pretty well. I think that um, there's been some public comment, some discussion that um, uh, people would like some more transparency into the process. Uh, and I think the board tomorrow night is going to try and talk a little bit about what, you know, how do they do how do you make you know this uh, a process where the public input can be received, and at the same time, if the board decides they want to negotiate, you know, an IMA with Hopkinton, you don't want to be negotiating something publicly um, and kind of telling everybody what you're going to do before you do it. So um, I think they're trying to find a balance, and hopefully there'll be some conversation about that tomorrow night. They could figure out a path forward on that. Okay. Um, oh, John, I do see your, your comments up. Given that this is a chair members update, we will have a public comment. So I'll come to you during public comment for you to weigh in in any way you want um, on that. Um, the next is on Cordova Road. So as everyone remembers in our July meeting, we outlined um, and agreed upon a process with Public Works Planning Board of how that would be vetted. Again, huge capital item coming forward this year. Um, as you probably saw from some of the correspondence we received, um, some of the trees had been tagged as we had asked um, to, to start the process of an understanding of um, what may be um, in play for that particular project. Um, and then the DPW superintendent's um, resignation um, followed last week. So um, I did speak with Mark. Um, I don't think it's appropriate for capital to, to push this forward without um, an employee um, on the town side that um, has this expertise. Um, pushing it forward um, in, in bringing in the right consultants. So um, I've, I've asked him um, to go back to the board and, and try to figure out um, where they wanna go with this project too. Um, but I don't think capital should be in a position to, to drive a project forward per se, um, cause we, we, we need to vet it. Um, so um, I guess this is an acknowledgement that we're way off the timeline that we agreed upon. Um, which certainly puts pressure on the amount of public forums that you can do um, before um, town meeting. But um, that, that's where we're that at with this particular topic. And I think it was worth at least acknowledging in open session um, because Karen had started a process. Um, but unfortunately, we are going to need an employee um, on the town side to, to help drive this forward because I don't think a volunteer board can drive forward a, a capital project of that nature. I know, Mark, if there's anything you would add on, on where that's at. No, I, I think that's I think that's about it. Um, as you know, as Jason mentioned, and you know, and since she did it quite publicly, it's really not a, a surprise with with um, um, Ms. Galligan's resignation um, uh, and her uh, her last day is January 6th. Uh, again, select board meeting on Wednesday night. We're going to be talking about um, the the path forward on the recruitment process for a for placement director, uh, superintendent. Um, and, and I think that's going to put some of these things, um, you know, um, on a, on a different track than we may have them on now. Um, some of the correspondence from some of the initial outreach we've seen on, uh, Court of a road project. Um, and again, uh, it's very early in the development stage, very early. It's, you know, 25%, um, planning stage is, is still very early. Um, and, you know, there's already some um, some initial pushback from some of the the trees and everything that, that would have to be 
um, um, removed uh, in this project in order to accommodate sidewalks and things of that nature. So if we're looking at like a complete streets grant, which would require you to put in sidewalks and a lot more than just simply putting in new pavement, um, you know, that, that funding source would be something that I think capital would obviously be interested in as to how this gets slotted and what the tax impact of the project is. So um, more work to do. I wouldn't be surprised if this gets pushed um, and is something that, um, you know, these conversations will be had down the road, but it's not something we'd be looking at for a town meeting in March. But, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see how this process goes to bring in um, a new superintendent and whether we can get some traction or we're going to have to wait. All right. <clears throat> um, Joe, I'm not really going to take much discussion on this um, just because it's a chair member update. Um, do you think it requires discussion or is it just a comment? It, it was more like a comment thought to the committee in that the fact that if, if this is going to get pushed off, does that mean that we should, we should be looking for another thing to be put in? Well, I think that leads nicely to the, the agenda item that we're not going to spend a ton of topic time on tonight. Brian, Brian has been working on updating how he's going to bond out projects that are already um, approved. And I think what we plan to do with the next meeting is come with a presentation of, we, we might've already been oversubscribed for this year, Joe, right? So not that this project doesn't need to happen in some way, shape or form, but it may be a relief valve too. I think we need to all weigh, you know, kind of how this looks compared to prior years. So uh, potentially, um, but I think we we're already a little oversubscribed for the year, to be honest with you. And it was gonna be bonded um, if it did move forward. So you wouldn't have even seen it next year. Um, all right, so I'm gonna pass on um, the, I, the review of the, um, all the capital we've received because we still haven't gotten a full submission, um, DPW being one of them um, in the current debt schedule. We'll do a holistic review of that on screen next time. Um, there's no relevant capital project status update. So I'm gonna go right to public comment before we um, adjourn. So John, um, thank you for being patient. And um, you have the floor once you come over. John, I still see you on mute. Okay, so I noticed that this was on your agenda and thought that I would make myself available if you had any questions. I would note that I basically agree with uh, Mr. Purple's statement from before. It's a good summary. Um, I think that at the present time, the state of this is unclear as to whether there will be significant capital attendant to the possible initiation if it should happen of a water connection to Hopkinton. So whether anything would hit your plate from the viewpoint of spending, unclear. Um, isn't gonna be clarified maybe for another month, I don't know. It's hard to say exactly how long it'll take to make that clear, but certainly isn't clear now. If you wanted a summary of sort of the progress that Ms. Galligan and I made from the time of July through September, there was a report that we both made on the 20th of September to the select board that's available recording. You can look at that presentation. Most of the slides from mine, I guess. Um, but in any case, um, work's going on and it just isn't crystallized enough yet to say, if we were to do something, here's the shape of it. It, it, it still is, it still needs work before it can get to that stage, probably needs conversations with further conversations with Hopkinton after clarifying our own position. So any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Okay. All right. Thank, thanks for the update, John. And certainly sure. don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything from Capital. Yeah, we'll just you know, be if standing by. Develops, we'll keep you posted. Okay, thank you. Right. Have a good night. You too. All right. Is there any other uh, public comment? Uh, seeing none. 
Um, is there a motion to, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All right, roll call vote, Hark. Aye. Palmer? Aye. Schoner? Aye. Wheeler? Aye. And Malinowski's aye. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, Jason.